Hey guys, Mason Marangelli here, The Rig Doctor. Welcome to my workshop here in California. Today I'm here to show you how to properly solder square plugs. We're gonna go through their straight and pancake variety. I'm gonna show you my techniques so that you can get them operating as reliably as possible. Let's get into it. My name is Mason Marangella. I build rigs for the industry's top professionals. Now I'm teaching guitarists how to build rigs like the pros with DIY tips, easy mods, and all the tricks of the trade. I am the Rig Doctor. So today what I'm gonna be working with is my exemplars are the SP400 and SP4. Now these are the smaller diameter versions of the square plug, so they're made for a smaller diameter cable. That just means the thickness of the cable is smaller. I'm gonna be using today Mogami 2314. This is a smaller diameter patch cable. If you see something that says SP500 or SP5, that's just for a larger diameter cable, like a Mogami 2319. And if you actually look at the spec sheet of any of the cables that you're considering using, it will tell you what the outer diameter of that cable is, and you can compare that to see whether that's gonna be a match for an SP4 or SP400, or by contrast, an SP5 or an SP5, which are just, again, the larger diameter versions of the exact same plug. All other things are the same. All the techniques I'm gonna show you today are identical, no matter which one of those plugs that you use, whether it's the larger or smaller diameter. So let's get into it. First thing I wanna do is I wanna get some trays ready here, right next to my iron. The reason I wanna get this ready is there's a lots of small screws, and I don't wanna lose the screws or the housings. So I'm gonna just dispose of them in something where I can find them at a later time. I'm gonna start first with my pancake side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp this down in my vise. I've got my square plug nicely clamped down there. I'm gonna get my soldering iron ready. And I'm gonna tin both of the lugs. So got these nicely tinned. That means I'm just kind of pre-soldering them, getting them prepped and ready for the cable to come in. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my Mogami 2314. I'm gonna strip, I'm gonna say about an inch off, maybe a little bit more. Basically what I'm doing, if you come in nice and close, I'm basically looking to see that when the housing goes on, that that outer insulator is gonna get clamped in and is gonna hold this tight because the enemy of any connection like this is lateral movement. We don't want it moving side to side. If I go down here and I clamp it, I'm gonna have a lot more wiggle room than if I clamp over the outer insulation like that. So I wanna make sure that if I'm clamped there, I still have enough room to reach the tip and the sleeve. And actually I'd say I'm a little bit short, so I might wanna just take off a tiny bit more just to make sure I have plenty. Just did a tiny bit more. And now I'm gonna braid this. I just wanna pre-measure to make sure that I'm looking good here. It looks like I might be slightly long, so I'm just gonna cut off the little pieces that I think are a little bit too long. Okay, perfect. So this is about what I'm gonna need, and I'm just gonna take off the slightest bit on the side that's gonna go to the tip. I need to expose very little of that because I wanna keep as much of that clear insulation around it. The idea is, is this is gonna protect me from a short, so I don't have any risk at all of for some reason the shield coming over, touching against it, and shorting it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tin these guys. This is just like a fancy word for saying I'm gonna pre-solder them. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna solder them right down on here. I'm just gonna heat up that tinned area that I already had. I already got my center conductor going. That's on the tip, that's good. I'm gonna solder the sleeve right now the shield perfect that's laying in there perfectly come and take a look at that so I got them nice and soldered nice solder there is nice and shiny don't have any wires exposed if anything was sticking off beyond this I could always take my wire snips and cut that flush and I have all my outer insulator ready to go it's nicely in that groove it's gonna give me some nice resistance once I come down to really hold it in tight so I'm just gonna screw these back on 
So now I have very little movement in there. It's not moving hardly at all because I have a nice clamp down on it. It's putting enough pressure on the cable where it's not going to damage it, but it's also going to eliminate as much lateral movement as possible. That's how you do the SP400. But let's go and solder the other side, which is the SP4, the straight version. So the thing you need to remember on this, you always have to put on the housing first, because if you forget this, you're gonna have to desolder the whole thing and start over again. There's a little bit of a cover that's kind of buried in the inside. I'll pull that out for you. You wanna make sure that that's on the inside too. These are pretty small and will have a tendency to work themselves out. Next, I'm gonna clamp my straight connector into my vise. I'm gonna tin this as well, and I'm not going to tin the bottom section. As you can see here, there's a little hole that's exposed in the bottom of the straight style connector. I'm leaving that open because I'm actually gonna feed through the shield through that because the issue with these is that the housing is so small that I can't really leave very much exposed cable at all if I wanna make sure that I'm using the full benefits of the strain relief. The other thing that I've done, if you notice here from the side, is I've actually bent down the tip slightly. Comparatively, this is what a new one looks like where it's sticking straight out. What I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm bending it slightly down. This is just to give me a nice angle when I go into solder. You'll see that in a second. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip off very little. I'm doing less than a half inch here, probably actually right about a half inch here. I'm gonna braid my wire. So I'm gonna tin this wire, my shield, and I'm actually gonna feed it through. I'm gonna point this up so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Now this is where the bending of the tip comes in handy because if I had to make this come all the way to the top if it were sticking straight out, that angle would be too intense. It would actually damage the cable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the littlest, teeniest, tiny part of the outer insulation off. I'm just gonna tin it just a, just a teeny tiny bit. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solder it to kind of the very top. And what that did is it allowed me to still have all of the insulation around. It's protecting it, but it is not going to touch at all the sleeve. I'm gonna turn this over now. I'm gonna feed the sleeve through and bend it back. Because it's already tinned, it's gonna bend back very easily and it keeps the cable in its proper formation. I'm gonna take a little solder, just come over the top with it. Bam, perfect. Now you can see there's a little bit sticking off. I'm gonna take my wire snips, cut that flush. We now have a perfectly soldered cable. You can see here perfectly the separation where you can see the shield is tied to the sleeve and the tip and the center conductor together. They're not at all touching. There's no stress on the cable. And this is gonna put as much of the outer diameter of the cable, the rubberized part, the plastic part exposed so that when I screw it together, that I'm not screwing into raw cable. I'm just screwing into the outside of the cable, the outer diameter, and it's holding it nice and taut it's restricting any pulling, it's restricting any lateral movement. And this is what a perfectly soldered square plug using either the SP4 or SP5 or the SP400 or SP500. This is how you do it. If you want a link to the materials that we used in order to do this, check in the description below. Again, these are square plugs, and today I use Mogami 2314. If I were gonna do it with 2319 or other varieties of cable, the rules stay the same. You just need to check the diameter of the cable and compare that to the square plug that you wanna to use to make sure that it's compatible. If you like what you saw today, I highly recommend that you subscribe, you give us a thumbs up, and you write us a comment. If you have a better technique for how you solder square plugs, I'd love to know about it. This has been incredibly reliable for me that I've used on countless boards without any plug failures, but I'm not opposed to hearing what you think. It might be a better way in order to execute these sorts of plugs with whatever the cable of choice is. So please do let us know that in the comments. I also recommend that you hit the bell icon so that you can stay up to date with all the new stuff that we have coming out. We also have merch below if you wanna buy some of the Vertex t-shirts, we have them available. We also have a podcast if you're interested in hearing more of us. We do interviews with rig builders, artists, guitarists, 
all sorts of people in the music game and you can hear their takes, their thoughts, their rigs. And it's a really, really interesting conversation that we get to have on a weekly basis with a lot of the greats in the industry. We also have a Patreon page where you can work one-on-one -on -one with us getting specific coaching and consulting based on your needs. So please do check that out if you're interested on in getting some one-on-one -on -one time with the Rig Doctor and our technicians. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, the Rig Doctor. See ya.